The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... sends a chill down my spine. You know it's a police car or ambulance on the way to or from an emergency in which someone is badly hurt. At Mercy Hospital, not everyone arrives with the shriek of a siren. Most arrive quietly with the help of a relative or friend. Some come alone, hoping against hope that the grasping pain around the heart is only indigestion. A few come under their own power, sheer willpower that keeps them conscious against all of the body's desire to give up, but hoping, as we always hope, that the bell has not yet tolled for us. Hear that, Chief? What does it have? Siren. Oh, I hope it isn't one of our ambulances. Well, ten to one it is. It was one of those nights of emergency when... Help. Help. Oh, all right, Toby, oh. give me a, give me yeah. a hand. Yeah. Orderly, get that rolling cart. Oh, he's heavy. He's just about unconscious. Where are you hurt, sir? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. All right, Orderly. Take him from Dr. Grant and let's get him on the cart. Easy now. Ooh. On his back. Gently. Oh. Yeah. What is it, Dr. Peterson? Appendix? Oh, you won't ask me that. Now I'll open this jacket. Look at that blood on his shirt. Oh. What is it, then? Get me some swabs. This man's been shot. Our mystery drama, The Witness is Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Joan Shea and Ken Harvey. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule... And Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You've seen the Budweiser commercials on television, and maybe you've wondered how long people have been putting that famous Bud label on things. Well, not as long as the Brewers of Bud have been putting things on the label. Things like a list of Bud's most important ingredients. Quote. Brewed by our original process from the choicest hops, rice, and best barley malt. And things like the following statement. This is the famous Budweiser beer. We know of no brand produced by any other brewer which costs so much to brew and age. Our exclusive Beechwood aging produces a taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability you will find in no other beer at any price. Unquote. Yes, brewing beer right does make a difference. Read the Bud label. Taste the king of beers. And you'll agree, when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Save a little and save a lot more at the Northwest Federal General Store. That's where you'll find a giant cracker barrel of gifts. Gifts for savers by famous makers we all know. The Sunbeam Hand Mixer, the Schick Style Dryer, a Presto Pressure Cooker and Wearing Blender. And they're all free or priced for special savings when you save $250 or more. See them all in our newspaper ads. And now you can save at three centers of interest in the great Northwest Territory, on Irving Park Road, on Dempster Street in Des Plaines, and now in Norwich in the Harlem Irving Plaza. So save where you get the highest interest rates allowed by law and get free gifts, too, from the Cracker Barrel of Gifts now at Northwest Federal Savings. But come in soon. Some styles and colors are limited. One gift per family, please. Offer good for a limited time only. Remember, it's Northwest Federal Savings Time, 63 hours a week. been shot. How? Why? 
Who is he? By whom was he shot? A jealous husband? A jealous wife? In anger or cold-bloodedly? Sheer accident? Or with malice aforethought? All these questions must wait as Dr. Brian Peterson works quickly and deftly, knowing this man is on the borderline between life and death and trying to find out who he is. <laughs> can you, uh... Can you give us your name, sir? I don't... I don't know. You don't know your name? No. Who, who shot? Rip open shot. the rest of his shirt and get your oh. stethoscope on his heart. Yes. We'll see how he's doing. Oh. Will do. Sir, can you hear me? Oh. Damn, he wasn't shot all that recently. He must have hemorrhaged internally like mad. Orderly, you and the nurse take him straight to emergency. Alert Dr. Aiello. We're going to need anesthesia. He doesn't look like the kind of man to get mixed up in a shooting. Looks can be deceiving, as you'll find out, MS, in turn. Is he going to die? Well, not as long as he's breathing. Nurse, get me some gloves. I want a good look at that bullet wound. Swab out the area again, Dr. <laughs> See the wound? Yes. It's small. Definitely point of entry. Just one shot. That's all I see. All right, thank you, Miss. Oh, uh, get me a probe and some retractors. Thank you. Now, let's have a better look. It was no toy bullet. Heavy 38 could be a police special. And the bullet's still inside. All right, get us an emergency OR, Doctor. We're going to have to go in. Doctor, should you risk operating without a release? I mean, who knows who this man is? Oh, we have information. We know he's white, male, and from his hands, I'd, I'd say some kind of workman. The police will have to take it from there. Murder. Someone tried murder. It's all right, sir. We are doctors. You're no. in a hospital, and you're no. safe. Now, what's your name? Name. Name. No. I don't remember. I don't remember nothing except tried murder. Okay, Toby, go call the police. Then come up to OR. You can scrub and assist me on this one. Get the police? Yes, they're on their way. They have an idea who our mystery patient might be. Happy. The sooner we get that bullet out of his insides, the happier I'll be. It's behind his spleen, resting on the spine. You say the police think they know who he is? Yes, a man named Roy Richardson. That name mean anything to you? Of course. <laughs> Don't you dames ever read the papers? Of course not, Doctor. We're always too busy curling our hair or recoloring our nails. Oh, don't get your back up. Well, then stop looking down your nose. I happen to have been on duty 60 hours out of the last 72. No, I haven't read the papers. Who is Roy Richardson? You know who Augie Larch is. Well, he'd be a little hard to miss. Our big-time racketeer who got nailed on income tax evasion and is about to go on trial. Yep, you know why. Well, oh, because someone in his organization was willing to turn state's evidence in order to... <gasps> Roy Richardson. That's the guy's name. Yeah. He's the witness. If we can bring him through. Yeah? Augie? Who's this? Johnny A. Johnny Angel. But all you know that you dropped me after we fought. Okay, okay. I just had to be sure. Your phone safe? Yeah, yeah. It's a public phone right here. Well, you hold a big yap. Just give me the number. I'll call you back on a safe phone. <laughs> Suction. I'll cut off that bleeder, Toby. Retractor. Clamp. Tied off, Dr. Peterson. Yeah, that's a little better. Now we 
we can see what... Oh, oh, there's the trouble. It's a big slug with lots of velocity. Must have bounced around plenty. Uh Bullet forceps, nurse. There's the baby. (laughs) Yeah, 38, all right. Soft-nosed. Just hope we don't have too many intestinal perforations. Hold on to that, nurse. Please hold on to it. I don't see any damage to the vital organs. Mr. Richardson is still going to be lucky to pull out of this one. And even if he does, to stay alive. One way or another. Mercy Hospital. It's okay, Augie. It's me. It's Johnny A. Okay. What's the scoop? They're operating on him now. Yeah, did he talk? I don't think so. Barely made it in the door. I saw the lock, but couldn't get to him in time. Is he gonna make it? I got no way of knowing. Well, you better make sure he don't. Okay, what can I do here in the hospital? You better figure that luck never comes to. He can nail me, and I don't intend to be nailed. But if I should be, you better know you're deep sixed. But okay. Don't talk, move. I'm going to give you a safe number you can contact me through. And if you need Gus, I'll send them to you. If that Fink's mouth has got to be shut, let Gus handle it. That dummy is expandable. Only you back him up and make sure. Come in. Dr. Peterson? Oh, yes. Detective Sergeant Sam Marshall. Oh, how are you, Detective? I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, but I... I just got down from the operating room. How's your patient? Good constitution. He came through a very tough operation very well. He's going to live then? Well, I can't tell you that. The next 24 hours will tell. I understand he was in no condition to talk when he got here. Hmm? That's right. Or give his name? That's right. Just something about murder. But I had a notion from Dr. Grant, who reported the bullet one, that you had a pretty fair idea who he was. Well, we know that a witness in a trial due to start next week against Augie Larch disappeared last night, or at least somewhere between midnight and eight this morning. Roy Richardson. Yeah. We've been keeping his picture out of the papers to protect him. It looks as if you didn't do a very good job of that, Sergeant. Richardson was the one who ducked us. Yes. Is this the man you operated on, Dr. Peterson? Well, no. No, I've never seen this man before in my life. Well, that's the way a cop's life goes, Doc. No, I've got to open a new file. Who the devil is your John Doe? Well, we found no identification on him. Looks like that's your problem, unless... Unless what? Well, unless... (laughs) I guess everyone can't resist trying to play cop, Sergeant, but... When this man got to the hospital, he'd been carrying that slug in him for some time. Huh? I don't see how he could have made it on his feet for so long unless... Uh Uh-oh. What is it? Look down there. There's a parking lot for the hospital. Huh? See that car down there? Uh Huh? Next to my red convertible? Is that yours? No. I hope I can do a better job of parking than that. Anyway, isn't that space reserved for doctors? Yes, but it's also right near the emergency entrance. Come on, Sergeant. Maybe we can find out the easy way who Mr. Roy Richardson isn't and just how he's mixed up in this. There's blood all over the seat. Don't touch the wheel, Doctor. You find anything? Registration for the car. Joseph C. Wilson, 1440, Floraville Avenue, height 511, one half. Weight 170, eyes blue gray, hair light brown, age 36. Sound familiar? Yes, that could be the man I operated on. Description, Fitz. Mm-hmm. Apex Insurance. In case of accident, notify Mrs. Joseph Wilson. Let's go do that little thing, Doctor. You, uh, you know this, Wilson? I mean, was he another witness? Never heard of him. But I'd give a lot for a few words with him. Richardson is still missing, and my hunch is any deal he thought he could make with Augie Larch was one way. The odds are that Richardson is already at the bottom of some convenient lake. 
The big question is, did they intend to dump Mr. Wilson there, too? Or was he one of them and something went wrong? Either way, you've got to help me get something out of the guy. We had Augie Larch just where we wanted him. And I don't want to see him get off the hook. All they that take the sword shall perish by the sword. Is Joe Wilson's fate just retribution? Or is he an innocent victim? Is he another unfortunate possessor of information about the illegal operations of a ruthless criminal? Or is he something else entirely? Someone with no contact at all with Augie Larch, and yet who is infinitely more dangerous to him? I'll return shortly with Act Two. Give your hand to a friend. Give your heart to your love. But give your cold to contact. The good or better. Six or three or what? Please don't give me problems. I'm catching a common cold. Sneezing, <laughs> drips, congestion. Leave for those symptoms. You'd need six cold tablets, two every four hours, or three ounces of cold liquid, one every four hours, or just one contact. I know, the tiny time pill. Right. Both the others are things for aches and fever, and the liquid, something for coughs, not found in contact. Your cold, your choice. Sneezing, drips. Congestion? I'll take the contact. Give your call to contact. The food is a bad Six or three or one. Take contact. Only as directed. The Marine Corps Reserves are looking for a few good men to help keep the peace. We're looking for men who understand that nobody likes to fight. But somebody has to know how. We want men who want to see their children grow up in an age of peace. Men who will do more than wish for it. Men who will work for it. Men who don't need the draft to know there's a job to be done. Men who ask themselves what they can do for their country and do it. We're looking for a few good men to stand with the Marine Corps Reserve. No shortcuts, no compromises, no promises except one. You'll be a Marine, and you'll be ready. That's the job of a peacekeeper. in the intensive care unit lies the man for whom we seem to have found a name. But while the doctors monitor and fight to save the patient's life, Detective Sergeant Sam Marshall doggedly follows his job of finding out if he really is Joseph C. Wilson. And if he is, who he is, what he is, and what led him to being the target of a perhaps lethal bullet. As soon as the necessary police machinery has been set in motion, he goes personally to interview Joe's wife, Helen. And I was frantic. I was just going to call you. The police, I mean. Mm. Now you... Now you tell me this is... How could anyone ever shoot my Joe? Well, the point is, somebody did, Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> now, I've seen a picture of him. There's no doubt it's your husband. But why? Joe didn't have any enemies. Uh, not that kind, anyway. Uh, what does your husband do for a living? He, he's a plumber. Does he have a partner, work for a firm? No, or... no, he's just in business for himself. Uh, does he stay out much nights? Oh, not Joe. Outside of his work, the kids and me are his whole life. How many children do you have? Two. Mm -hmm. Ronnie, he's eight, and, and the baby, Sue Carroll, she, she's three. Uh, how come he went out last night? Well, it, it, it was an emergency call. No, from whom? Oh, Yes. The Bensons, up on Long Ridge Road. They're, well, they're old customers and kind of friends, so that's why he went out so late. Uh, would there be any reason for him to come back by the old high road? Yes. Yes, he's stubborn about some things. It's a shortcut, but... But what? I've asked him not to use it. 
There were so many blind curves, and it twists, and it's narrow, and it's all full of potholes, and well, nobody uses it much since it's so deserted, and since you... If, if you do meet someone coming the other way, it's so easy to have an accident. <laughs> I was always afraid, and I always had one. Please, I, I want to go to my husband. I, I want to talk to him. Morning, Mr. Wilson. I'm Dr. Peterson. What am I doing, Doc? Thanks to a good, strong constitution, fine. You got any pain? Uh, some. Helen. Does Helen know about me? Yes. What happened? Oh, just that you were shot. That's all any of us knows yet. There um, is a detective of police down in my office who no. would like to... Uh, no, I, I want to see my, my wife first. Yes, she's right outside. Nurse, you can get Mrs. Wilson and bring her in. Doc. Yes? Could I uh, see her alone for a minute? Well, if you uh, if you promise not to overexcite yourself, I don't want to scare you, but you're a long way from being out of the woods yet. Uh, I promise. Joe. No. You, darling. Oh, baby. You all right, honey? Uh, oh, me. I can eat anything. Even all that slug. <laughs> well, I'll give you two a moment alone. Come on, nurse. Joe, what happened? They gone. They just stepped outside the door. What are you mixed up in? I'm not mixed up in anything. Why are you so scared? You got shot, didn't you? I want to know why. I can tell you. But I'm not so sure about... Oh, why did I take that shortcut after all the times you asked me not to? Helen, I think I saw a guy murdered. <laughs> And I don't want to start throwing any weight around, Doctor, but if there's any possibility your patient in there may die, I need a statement and some information from him. I uh, don't know if I can permit that, Sergeant. His wife was allowed to see him this morning. Only for a little while, and only if she didn't allow him to get overexcited. I promise to take it easy. It's just... Uh... Well, Roy Richardson is still missing. Without him, we have no case against Augie Larch. Very well, then. But a few minutes. And I'm going to be in there to make sure you don't upset him. Be my guest. Why should I upset him if he's got nothing to hide? Uh, this is Detective Sergeant Marshall, Joe. He wants to ask you a few questions. I'll do, Sergeant. Feeling better? Well, kind of weak, like... Go ahead. Uh, you're a plumber, Mr. Wilson, huh? Yep. And last night you were called on an emergency job late after dinner. Hmm? That's right. The Bensons, good customers, good friends of mine. Mm -hmm. They sprung a leak in the main water valve coming under the house. I had quite a time of it before I could get a new washer in there. And afterwards, you came home by the old high road? Uh, that's right. Saves about three miles over going around a new road. At what time was this, Mr. Wilson? Oh, 11, maybe quarter 12. And what time did you leave to go to the Bensons? Hmm? Around 7.30. Got there maybe about 8. Mm-hmm. Three hours to put in a washer? Well, like I say, I, I had a tough time of it. And the Bensons are old friends. I stuck around talking. Had a beer or so. And it was coming back on the old high road you were shot. That's right. How? Well, see, I was coming around a sharp bend where the road kind of dips down in a hollow. Uh-huh. And I hear what sounds like a blowout. So I hit the brakes, slow down as I come around the bend. And I see in my headlights this car parked off the road by the lake uh -huh. facing me with the headlights off. The car was off the road? Well, half on the shoulder. Uh -huh. And right beside it, there was... Two other guys 
lifting someone like he was hurt. And I stopped and I got out and I yelled, could I help? And before I knew it, one of them pulled a gun and took a shot at me and hit you. That's why I'm here. What did you do then? What would you do? I dived from my car and got to left the engine running and I took off right past them like a hound dog with a bee up his tail. They shoot at you again? Sergeant, I don't know. All I knew was I was hurt and heading for the hospital. Another thing to thank God for. They hadn't pulled off the road. I'd never got past them. Uh, uh, you know uh, Roy Richardson, Mr. Wilson? Name's familiar, but... Um... You ever hear of Augie Larch? Oh, you mean the, the, the gangster, the mob guy? Oh, you tell me. Was he one of the men you saw murder Roy Richardson? Oh, I don't know for sure who was murdered or even if it was. Oh, you must have seen these men in your headlights. Could you identify any of them for us? Oh, I don't I don't know. If I, if I, if I, if You'd be willing to try, huh? Well, I, I guess. Sure, sure. I, I, I mean, All right, Sergeant, I I'm sorry, but I'll have to stop you. That's quite enough for now. Okay, you're the doctor. But I'm going to have to talk to him again. Just so long as it won't endanger his life. Oh, oh, don't worry about that. His life is just as important to me as it is to you, doctor. But from here on in, I'm going to do everything I can to protect it. told the kids about about you yet, Joe. Because all day I, I've been doing a lot of thinking. What kind of thinking, Helen? You got yourself mixed up with some real bad, no good trash. Don't you think I know that, Helen? Huh? They left me with a big enough message to remind me. There are messages from the other side, too. You know, there's a policeman on guard outside your door. Why? Joe, darling, those men... Or the one that, who shot you and the other one. Could you recognize them if you saw them again? I'm still mixed up. Like sometimes I tell myself, I'm not 100% sure I could. And then I shut my eyes. And I know I could pick them out in a jam-packed ballpark. But if I really had to tell the truth... I think maybe the reason is I'm just plain scared. Oh, Joe, darling, don't you see that's just the way I feel? I don't want you to identify those men, even if you could. They've done enough to you already. I don't want you to take any chances they'll do any more. So, Helen, I got to do what's right. Why? You didn't ask to get tangled up in this... this, this filth and crime? You want all of us to creep around scared to death from here on in if you identify these men? Ronnie? Sue Carroll? Me? But, Look at what happened to you already. But, Helen, it's like I'm, I'm a citizen. Uh, if I've got rights, i, I got duties, too. Joe, promise me you'll stay out of it. That's the only way all of us can be sure we'll be safe. Especially you. You're sure, Sergeant Marshall. Positive identification, Doctor. He hadn't been in the water that long. After talking to Mr. Wilson, we located the spot where the shooting took place. We had a crew with us, and they brought up Richardson the third time down. Bullet through his head. So there goes your witness on the evasion of taxes trial. Uh, small potatoes. Now we can get them on a bigger rap. Murder? If your patient, Mr. Wilson, comes through. Can I see him now? I'm sorry to have to break in on your visit, Mrs. Wilson, but Sergeant Grant has to talk to your husband. More questions, and not so much this time. I had a copy of the transcript you made to me this morning typed up. I'd uh, like to get it signed. I'm not going to look at your pictures. Why not? 
for the same reason I won't sign this statement. I, I can't identify the men. You indicated you might. Well, I'm not sure anymore. He'd be in terrible danger if he could. Mrs. Wilson, every precaution is being taken for your husband's safety. You saw the police guard outside the door. What about my wife and children? I'm trying to cover your house, too. With killers like these, that's no protection. What else can I do? Uh, could I come up with an idea? And welcome. Well, it's the neat old adage which solves all problems. Dead men tell no tales. I don't understand. Well, look, suppose everyone thought your husband had died from the bullet in him. What would those gunsels have to worry about then? You released that story to the press, I'll substantiate it. A big little white lie, eh, Doctor? Would you be willing to look at the pictures then, Mr. Wilson? And make an identification, if you find one? Or two? Helen? Oh, Joe, I, I don't know what to say. If... Everyone is willing to put themselves out like that. How can we let them down? Morning, Joe. Well, how's it going today? Well, I ain't ready to take on Muhammad Ali, <laughs> but I'm getting there. Well, this may give you a lift. The morning paper, page one. Shooting victim succumbs. Joseph Wilson, age 37, died at Mercy Hospital last night as the result of a mysterious bullet wound inflicted while he was driving along the old high road. Wilson, a plumber by trade, leaves a wife, Helen, and two children, ages eight and three. Let me see that. <laughs> well, you have the right. Not many men get to see their own obituaries. Sure gives a man a funny feeling. I'll bet. The victim's will said he will be buried in Clendon Cemetery. <laughs> that policeman sure did it up thoroughly, didn't he? Well, they could scarcely release a story that you died without being nice enough to bury you. At least now, the killers are off your trail. Hello, Augie. Augie, Johnny A. You seen the papers this morning? Good news, nothing. Forget it. I'm telling you, the guy ain't dead. About a half hour ago, I seen his wife sneak into the hospital. And just to make sure, I took a chance and went by his room at the hospital just a minute ago. There's still a cop outside the door. You don't need fuzz to guard a dead man. <laughs> appears that our innocent bystander is still in jeopardy. Has a brilliantly performed operation saved his life, only to have it threatened once again? I'll return shortly with the answer to that and Act Three. Inside your free, inside your free after all, you hear freedom spirit. You feel like breaking loose, and so off you go in a Skyhawk. Buick's sleek, low-slung 2 plus 2 road machine. Its streamlined nose thrust rakishly ahead. Its spirited V6 engine supplying the motion. All of a sudden, living free becomes second nature. Skyhawk, catch one at your Buick dealer now. Inside your free. Mal Belayers here with an interesting fact about water brought to you by your local Culligan man. Did you know that in the United States there's almost 20 times as much water in the ground as there is water on the surface? For example, Florida alone has more underground water than all the water in the Great Lakes combined. And uh, speaking of the Great Lakes, there's a popular misconception that Lake Michigan water is soft. However, According to a government study, to be classified as soft, water must contain less than three and a half grains of hardness per gallon. 
And Lake Michigan water contains about eight grains of hardness per gallon. So, call your local Culligan man. Ask him to show you the difference that hardness makes. Whether you have Lake Michigan water or other than Lake Michigan water, you'll be astounded. There's no cost or obligation, so call your Culligan man today. You'll find him underwater in the yellow pages. This is WBBM Chicago. News Radio 78. The time is 11.06. It's 10 about at Midway. It was Robert Burns, the Scottish poet, who penned the lines, The best laid schemes of mice and men gang off to glay. Certainly all the plans to protect Joe Wilson by announcing his apparent death have been negated by his wife's thoughtless and untimely visit and the fifth columnist in the hospital. Unfortunately, the doctors and the police are unaware of this. Still, what can men, even as desperate as Augie Larch, do to stop Joe from identifying them now? It ain't good enough, Johnny. But Augie, what else can I do? I don't know. What a fool I was to be with you when we rubbed out Richardson. The way it was, we didn't have time to handle it any other way. All I know is this isn't just beating a little income tax evasion. My neck is on the line for the big M. So's mine, Augie. Yeah, well, that's what I'm counting on. I'm sending you Gus. Between you, you better figure out some way to make that orbit come true. Okay, boss. But don't you give Gus a gun. I'll handle that end if we need it. Don't worry, it's muscle I'm sending you. I wouldn't trust him with a gun either. But don't forget, I don't care how you do it, but I want that witness dead. Like I said, it's my neck on the line too, Augie. One way or another, that's just what he'll be before the day's out. And Mrs. Wilson is up with him now, still? I... I guess so. I, I've been on rounds. After all our arrangements, why did you let her go up there? She was already in the hospital and on his floor before I bumped into her by accident. I tried to argue her out of the doctor, but she insisted on seeing him. Yes, and if those mobsters are having the hospital watch, the whole cover scheme may be out the window by now. Well, even if he was dead... She had a right to come and make arrangements for his funeral. Yes, I suppose. But when Sergeant Marshall turns up, he'll probably blow a gasket. Not the damage of any is done already, so there's no use our getting excited about it. One thing we can do. What? Smuggle her out of here the best way possible without a chance of her being seen. I have fourth floor nurse's desk. Well, this is Dr. Peterson. He is. Oh, yeah, well, um, would you tell him I'll be right down? That's the sergeant. He's downstairs. Now, look, Tilly, I'll go down and delay him a little. We can't wait for dark. You go along to the room and get Mrs. Wilson out of there. All right. I don't care how you do it, but if possible, without being recognized. Honey. I don't care how much, how long you argue with me. You're not going to change my mind. Joe, why should you risk your life? Ellen, I know you love me. But you should have gone on out to Dayton with the kids like we planned. Oh. You took an awful chance coming here today when I'm supposed to... I, I, I know, I know. But I told you, I sent the kids off last night and your mom and pa were going to meet them. I couldn't go, Joe. I laid awake all night worrying about the chance you're taking. And I had to come to ask you not to take it. Baby, I'm a citizen. It's my duty. I'm sorry to break in on you, but Sergeant Marshall is downstairs and on the way up. Mrs. Wilson, I think you'd better get out of here. Helen, you listen to the doctor and me. You go. You let me do what I have to. Joe. If I'm going to live, I have to live with myself. And there's only one way I guess I can do that. I 
I'm not going to try to pretend I'm not sorry the wife came here, but there's no sense in worrying over spilt milk, Dr. Peterson. The sooner we get a positive identification on who murdered Roy Richardson, the sooner Joe Wilson will be out of danger. From outside threats, perhaps. Hmm? The man is still fighting for his life from the damage that bullet did to him inside. So, uh... Take it as easy on him as you can. Cops are human, Doc. Uh, that's all right, officer. Just relax, but keep your wits about you. Uh, can we go in, Doctor? Oh, sure. Well, afternoon, Mr. Wilson. This shouldn't hurt too much. I've uh, brought some pictures, so it wouldn't be too heavy. I had the computer select them so you didn't have to wade through the whole mug file. Uh, for example, uh, this here first one. Uh, do you recognize him as one of the men you saw carrying Roy Richardson's body the night of the murder? Well, why, that's... Uh... I've seen his picture in the newspapers. Yeah, he's a prominent man. Uh, was he one of them? I like to get something straight first. I ask. If I identify the guys, uh-huh. what happens then? Oh, well, we pick them up and arrest them. And I'm out of it? Well, not exactly. Why not? Because your statement would not be admissible in court unless you're there to be questioned not only by the state, but counsel for the defense. Due process of law. I see. Why do you ask? It's all right, I'll get that. Because uh, I'm afraid yes, well, my wife will feel I sold her and the children down the river. It's the other way. You're right. buying her, your children, and yourself freedom from fear. I'm sorry there's some flowers for Joe's special receipt requested. Flowers for a dead man, huh? There's a card. Here. You read it, Sergeant. Joseph C. Wilson, room 412. Best wishes, Joe, from your watchful friends, both here and in Dayton. That's right. Dayton. Where I sent my kids to be safe. I'll forget about this. Your wife shouldn't have come to see you this morning, but you'll be protected. Yeah. We're going to be protected, Sergeant Marshall. You get your little pen and pencil out. I'm going to give you my final statement. Now, wait a minute. Not even a second. You start writing. It was too dark on the old high road for me to see a thing. I don't know what happened. I couldn't identify anyone in a million years. Just count me out as a witness. Oh, Toby, you look bushed. (sighs) Tired enough to step out of channels and say to the chief of staff, so do you. Well, it's an occupational hazard. Can't you take a break? No, sir. I have emergency clinic from 8 to 12. How about you? Oh, 24 hours a day for me. Mm. Cheer up. The further you go, the worse it gets. Well, happy clinic. Oh, it shouldn't be too bad. It's a Tuesday. Tuesdays always seem to be slow for some reason. Well, then, let's hope it runs true to form. <laughs> Hey, Gus. Uh, Let's try to forget your belly and concentrate on what you need clinic service for, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I got a bum ankle. Yeah. Concentrate on your ankle. Yeah. It's sprained. Uh, it hurts like hell. Maybe it's even broken. Okay? Yeah. Now, it's dark enough. Let's go. Next. Ah, uh, hi, Doc. Not so busy tonight, huh? Which makes doctors thankful for small mercies. Oh, I guess you are right. <laughs> What's the matter with your friend? Well, uh, we was visiting a friend here in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. And on the way out, I, I turned my ankle on a step coming down from the front door. Oh, the pain! On a step down leaving the hospital? <clears throat> well, let's have a look. Which ankle? Uh, 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 the right, yeah, doctor. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't see any evidence of... Well, any... uh, now we're all alone. Uh, can you see this, doctor? Uh, a gun? That's right. Well, you must be paranoid. One shot in this whole hospital. You wouldn't hear a thing. No silences, see? Close the door, Gus. Right. What is it you want? Get us in to see Joe Wilson. And get us out with him. You ought to be able to figure a way. 
But real quick. Do you really think you can parade me through the hospital at the point of a gun? Even a silenced one? No parade, Doc. Nobody's going to pay us any attention. You're already dressed the part. Gus on a rolling cart like uh, this here. You get me a set of whites like an orderly. We're taking poor Gus and his badly sprained ankle to x-ray or wherever. Now let's stop stalling and get moving. Okay, Gus. You just lie down. Yeah. Now, Doc, you on the front end of the cart, me pushing on the back. Only stay on the side. Real close. Feel the gun. What are you going to do with Mr. Wilson when you get there? Get rid of him. But I promise you, he hasn't identified anyone to the police. He ain't going to have the chance. And what about me? You're not so hot at guessing, are you, Doc? Hi, Toby. I mean, Dr. Grant... What you got there? A badly sprained ankle, Doctor. It may be a break. Uh, going to x-ray. Why don't you let the orderly take him? Let's just have a cup of coffee. Uh, I, uh, I'm afraid I can't, Doctor. This is a little more serious than that. It looks like he has a, a lecturus pylorum. And I'm afraid the constrictor... Pharyngus may be involved. The constrictor for... You know how dangerous that can be, Doctor. There may even be a break involved. I want to stop that if it's possible. Okay, Doctor, that's your problem. You'll be able to handle it. I'll just go hit the hay for the night. You do that, Doctor. I've got to get this man up to fourth floor x-ray for special pictures. Oh, by the way, you better take the back elevator. The front one's out of whack again. Oh, I, I didn't know. Oh, didn't the orderly tell you? Well, he's a new man, Doctor. We'll, we'll handle it. Okay, it's your problem. I'm going home and forget the hospital exists. Nice going, Miss Doc. You handle that real sensible. Now, how far to the other elevator? Oh, not far. Just a few zigs and zags. It's in the old building. But what do you expect to do when you get there? Just... Substitute our stretcher passenger for Joe Wilson. Gus has an orderly suit he can change to. Then we just wheel our patient back down and out of your life. Out of mine? It's like any professional job. You can't leave any loose ends. Just the elevator? Yes. I, I guess this is it. <laughs> This is the last lap. So far, everything has gone pretty smooth. Well, let's keep it that way. Okay, Gus? You all dressed? Yeah. Hey, these white things feel nice. Fine, fine, fine. Just let's concentrate on trundling this cart past that top with the doctor's help and pick up our boy. Now, when we get to the cop... You already got to him, Johnny Angel. That's a police positive in your back. Just don't move. Or you, Gus. I got three guys covering you. Step aside, Dr. Grant. Don't try it. Oh. oh, damn. You shot me. I warned you. Okay. Oh, I guess you got me all the way. But Augie and I can't get enough scot free. Don't worry. Joe Wilson will be able to identify him now. Oh, oh come. You, you nailed me. Oh, you shouldn't fool around with doctors, Johnny, eh? Male or female, you're just not smart enough. What? What do you, what do you mean? Well, you tell him, doctor. Well, Gus was supposed to have a sprained ankle. When Dr. Peterson asked me what was the matter with him, remember what I told him? Uh, some double talk. I said he had an erectus pylorum. Yeah, well, certainly... It's a very small muscle at the base of the hair follicles. You, you gave me the old double O. <laughs> yeah, not the ankle. A muscle at the base of each hair in your head. It's enough to make your hair stand on end. Isn't it, Johnny Angel? <laughs> With the help of Joe Wilson's identification, 
Augie Larch and Johnny Angel were charged with criminal homicide and held without bail. Later, both were convicted and sentenced to maximum terms. Joe recovered successfully, and he and Helen subsequently had two more children. It's really another story with a happy ending, uh, more or less, uh, except for one thing. In the state where our story took place, murder in the first degree is, once again, the death penalty. I'll be back shortly. Some people think we play ping pong all day. They're wrong. The USO isn't all fun and games. Today, the USO has millions of problems like this one in Germany. My family's going crazy living in a tiny apartment. Where can we live? Today's USO has millions of problems like this one in Asia. I'm hooked on drugs. Where can I get help? Or this problem in Athens. Our marriage is breaking up. Can you help us? Today's USO has little time for ping pong. We've got serious work to do. We've got lots of new problems here and overseas. The problems are big. How big? Well, if someone asks you, who needs the USO? Tell them, we do, we do. Over 5 million American military personnel and their families need today's USO. And because we get no government funds, we need all your support. Please give to USO through the United Way or local USO campaign. The one thing that remained strongest in Joe Wilson's mind after the horror and pain of his experience had faded was the decision he had come to, finally, to make the identification. For whatever satisfaction the criminal's attempt to stop him may have given them on the way to the grave, for the rest of his life, Joe had a far better one. He could face himself every morning in the mirror and be sure, more than most of us, that he was a man and a good one. Our cast included Joan Shea, Ken Harvey, Sam Gray, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. How did this happen? I mean, to your leg. Well, he, he was chopping wood. His foot slipped and the axe caught him right at the ankle. Uh, it didn't seem like such a deep cut. He's had worse. So we, well, we bound it up and he went about his business for a couple of days. And, and then the swelling started. And then the fever set in. Oh, feel his forehead. He's burning up. Where's the axe? The the axe. The axe, the thing that caused the whole mess. Where is it? Well, why, right there by the door. Well, what are you going to do, Mr. Matter? You won't cut my leg off, will you? Oh, of course I'm not going to cut off your leg. I'm going to punish this axe. I'm going to make it suffer. I'm going to torture it. I'm going to make it endure such pain. But, but how? How are you going to do that, Mr. Mather? I'm going to crucify it. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. This is WBBM Chicago, News Radio 78.